I should have bought these items sooner. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. A few weeks ago, I brought a video to you guys about five things I regretted buying in my ham radio adventure. Well, today we're going to kind of flip that on its head and show you five items that I should have bought sooner. Number one is power pole crimpers and to go along with that power poles themselves. This is something that especially if you're going to work portable, you just need to invest in right out of the gate. Maybe for your first radio or even your second radio, you can get by without them. But as you go further and further into this hobby, you're going to find that you want to use power poles for everything. Whether it's putting a battery box together or putting power pole connectors on a new radio, having power poles on everything makes life ridiculously easy. And as Mike says, power pole the world. Number two on the list is an antenna analyzer. Now, whether you go with something like the VNA analyzer or something like the Rig Experts, you just need an analyzer when you get started. One of the first antennas that I built literally within three, four months of having my ticket was a copper J-pole antenna. The problem was, is after I got the thing built, I had no way to tune that antenna for the lowest SWR. I had to end up going to another ham who was kind enough to loan me an antenna analyzer. In fact, he was kind enough to loan me that analyzer several times before finally suggesting I just pick up my own. And he was right. Having that antenna analyzer on hand is just one of those key tools that you need as a ham radio operator. Next up is a power meter in the shack. Now, this isn't necessarily a tool that you need every single time you go portable, but having a power meter in the shack is really helpful. A, you can do some testing to see what the output is of various radios, and B, just having that visual reference sitting on your desk is also a good idea. Should something go wrong, or maybe you've uh, clicked a wrong setting either on the computer or in the radio itself, this will give you a visual indicator that you aren't getting power out to your antenna or that you're not getting as much power out as you think you are from the radio. In addition to giving you power out, it also shows you how much power is being reflected back, and the one I use gives me an SWR reading right there on the meter. So I just like to have one of these in the shack, and it's something I wish I'd have bought sooner. Number four is definitely personal preference, but I wish I'd have bought an APRS radio sooner. I have found that I really enjoy working with APRS, and I tried a few different things before I actually broke down and bought an APRS radio. I tried running APRS Droid with a Android phone, a BTEC cable, and a Baofeng, and yeah, it'll work uh, mostly, but it's just simpler to have an APRS radio. And I found that my enjoyment for APRS grew more and more after purchasing that first APRS radio. Now, like I said, that's personal preference. APRS might not even be a thing in your area. I have friends in different parts of the country that there's basically zero APRS packets flying around. But in my area, there's a lot of APRS activity, and I'm really glad I purchased that radio, but wish I'd have bought one sooner. And coming in at number five is BNC adapters. Now, I don't use BNC adapters on every single piece of kit. The radios behind me that are in the shack and permanently installed and never move, I still utilize SO239 connectors. However, for any piece of gear that goes portable, it's got to have a BNC connector on it. Whether that's the HTs that I've adapted all of them to BNC, or radios like the ICOM 705 that come pre-installed with a BNC connector, I just find it way easier in the field to utilize BNCs 
over SO239 or PL259 connectors. Sure, it was a bit of a pain to get everything migrated over, but I'm really glad that I did it, and again, wish I'd have done that sooner. I love being able to just quarter turn an antenna, pull it off of one radio, and put it onto another one, or change antennas on that radio that I'm currently using. So there's a look at five things I wish I had bought sooner. I'm sure the list is not all-inclusive of every single item, but I didn't want this to be a 30-minute video either. What do you wish you'd have bought sooner in your ham journey? Leave it down in the comments below. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.